Hi, I'm Stephanie Griffin, and I'm the violist for the Momenta Quartet. I'm Gordon Bieferman, a composer and pianist. I'm Arthur Campella, composer and guitarist. And all three of us are part of a concert on October 17th at 8 p.m. at Roulette as part of the Interpretation Series. It's a Momenta Quartet is doing the first set, and our theme is music by improvisers. In addition to music by Arthur and Gordon, we're also going to play a world premiere by Adam Rudolph and a string quartet number two by jazz legend Youssef Latif. The concept behind the whole program um, is music by improvisers. Um, but before we talk about it further, I just have one disclaimer. There is no improvisation on this program, in fact. Um, the idea was, um, well, basically the program concept asks a question. Like, with composers who also play and improvise, you know, in what way does their experience as an improviser inform the way in which they compose? And I feel like the four composers that we've chosen all have a very different take on this, on this question. Um, so for me, it makes a very interesting program because even though the, the, the thing that the four composers have in common is the fact that they're improvisers and being improvisers, they find their own unique path in, in expressing that. So my piece uh, is in Portuguese is uma faca só lamina, which means a knife or blade. It was uh, it's a huge process that I have the pleasure and the honor to be. Uh, this process was taken by the moment that this this piece was like uh, sleeping in my drawer for I don't know 13 years, uh, and uh, it coincided with the birth of my son. The idea the idea of the knife or blade is that uh, there is not a part in the knife that you can kind of hold without cutting yourself. And also, it has to do with a poem by this uh, Brazilian um, modernist um, uh, uh, guy called uh, Cabral, who had this idea that we carry inside of us this, this knife all blade that, that is a metaphor for, for the time ticking, for the urgencies of life, for all the things that we, we tuck, the corners that you go and, and we bleed against it. Somehow. So Arthur, I want to um, just ask you a little bit about the way your piece relates to improvisation. Um, personally, I was thinking that maybe your experience as a player, as sort of an experimental player, might have informed that. And um, I was just remembering the first time I started working on Bridges, the viola cadenza, which is part of the quartet, which we're playing on October 17th. Um, I, the score is perfectly notated. It's extremely detailed. And there's a guide with like little pictures of the viola with little arrows on it, like do this to your viola here, kind of thing. And you know, there's text and graphics and also exact rhythms and pitches and all that stuff. When I was learning the piece on my own, um, I had almost no questions. I had a couple small questions because it was so meticulously notated. So I called Arthur up, I called you up and I asked you a couple questions and I was just flabbergasted because because your response was, wait a minute, let me get my viola. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, Arthur's a guitarist. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> so I sat and waited while he got his viola, and then, and then he played for me over the phone, and it was like the most inspirational thing I've heard. It was the, hearing the composer himself play this crazy music. I mean, it wasn't the exact pitches that you wrote, <laughs> but the sounds, it was, so, it was so vibrant, and it answered all my questions. And then the first time I rehearsed with you, you had your viola with you, and, and you, were, you were kind of playing and showing me things and demonstrating. Um, and I remember you saying that you bought, like when you write a piece for an instrument, you tend to buy or rent an instrument and try things out. Right. Um, what, what led you in that direction? Physicality is for me a part of the compositional uh, trait. You know, I think that uh, uh, for me to have an instrument, uh, first of all, uh, if I if I was about to touch your instrument or somebody else's, mm -hmm. there would be a lot of fight before this uh, happened. So for me, you know, for me, I should have my own instrument where I should uh, where it would be interesting to to check what are, what are the limits with the instrument because I am a guitarist and I and I and I have a sense of uh, you know where I'm gonna break the, the instrument. Where, where, where's the breaking point? For me, great works of art that uh, can be difficult, but not awkward. 
you know awkwardness is a, is a, is for me is a is a, is a wrong temperature in a work so even if you say uh, I play the sonata of you know what what Chopin stands for in many senses not only because of his incredible melodic and harmonic sense but also by the the the, the, the possibilities of extending the you know the extending the gesturality that uh, is is within a certain instrument uh, you know like Liszt and all this the uh, all the species that try to to find ways to look and to hear the instrument in another way, in the romantic time, extending uh, you know register, uh, extending harmon harmonic uh, changes, etc. So for me, to have the instrument and to test and to have this first approach to instrumental writing, uh, even if I do not play the instrument, I could see what is possible to do, what is not possible to do. I start to rationalize the movements of the right hand, the left hand. So in certain ways, the improvisatory side, which is like, a, which, which I think that every composer does, uh, you know, or, or for me is essential doing. You know, um, if I have to compose a piece for this table, I, I, I need to knock the table oh, okay. first. If I just think about it, it's gonna be, okay but it's not gonna be real so i am pretty much uh, a believer in that uh, in the physicality of, of instrumental writing and playing and i think that the uh, structure obeys that type of uh, um, necessity a piece of mine on the program is called quadrille and uh, the piece is for a string quartet and piano which i'll be playing and dance and the dance portion of the, of the piece is choreographed by Stephanie Sleeper, and the, it is performed by her and the, the moment the quartet and me. So all the musicians dance as well. So the music and choreogra choreography are pretty closely intertwined, and you'll see us all doing crazy things like leaping and jumping and being lifted and doing things that do and don't go with the music. The concept of the piece is sort of a sort of like perverse or futuristic take on the quadrille, which is basically. Uh, the, uh, the square dance. Um, so I tried. We tried to create something that was absolutely not square, but but uses the idea of partnering, um, basically to do the duet, and everyone in the group gets to partner with everyone else in the group. That's like, you know, dance or music. There is the feeling of multiple things uh, happening at once that aren't necessarily uh, constantly lined up. It's similar to the experience of. You know, if, if improvising uh, in a free, non uh, like gridded rhythm with other with other players that have similar ideas. So there's a um, there's a kind of a freedom in that, and that things don't have to line up for each other. But beyond that, I think there's also a um, there's a sense of um, there's a sense of making decisions about how much time to take with things. You know, there's little pauses. Uh, there are little sort of hiccups and little things that can repeat. And, and uh, you know, it, it's like, it's sort of like stuttering. It's like having a thought. It's like, how, how far do I want to go with my, this thought until I get to the next thought? Um, so, the, the, so there are some, these are like spontaneous decisions that the musicians have to make, which are similar to the spontaneous decisions I make as an improviser. Yeah. I'd like to say something about the process, because I, I, the process in rehearsal is really um, almost like an improvisation as well. Because um, Stephanie Sleeper, well, she and I are roommates, and we've we've done things together before. And so has Gordon. Gordon has actually danced in the Stephanie Sleeper piece before we just made the quadro. Um, but she kept asking me questions. Um, you know, could you do this with a violin? Could you do this with a viola? Could you do this with a cello? So she was kind of in the back of her mind, kind of gathering a repertoire of things that she thinks she could get us to do without endangering our instruments. <laughs> um, so she had that going in, in mind, but then in the first rehearsals, um, it was actually like an improvisation. We all came, we did it here at, at this space where we are today, um, our rehearsal loft. And uh, she basically, we tried from, from step one, so she had the structure, she knew who was dancing when, and who was primary, and who was secondary, and we just experimented. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I think most, most choreographers have like, have a totally different process of creating their work than composers do. I mean, we're basically at home with our paper and we write it down and bring it into the rehearsal, mm -hmm. whereas the choreographers, it's, it's so much more of a collaboration with the performers. Yes, and especially when they're not dancers. Because <laughs> in <laughs> right. addition to what we can do with a violin, viola, and cello, there's also like, what's the comfort level of these non-trained dancers? Exactly. Like, what can we physically, physically accomplish? Do? Right. Yes. <laughs> and I think what's also interesting is that 
uh, Stephanie Sleeper's work in general, I think she's, I mean, I don't want to speak for her, but I think she's really interested in the idea of, 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 um, of hindrance <laughs> and things that make it awkward for the person to move. Like the piece that she and I did before, she actually has me tied up in this pulley. And like she's pulling me around and I'm trying to do all these things. So I think that, I think she actually, you know, it's something like this like works really well for her because there's like this barrier towards free and easy movement. Uh, or there's two barriers. One is the musical instruments, and the second is our lack of skill as trained dancers. And I think that's like, and I think she gets really, I think that's like a real uh, interesting, like I think it's like an inspiration for a lot of, for a lot of um, pieces that she does. Like, it's it's like a it's it's a it's a really extreme limitation, you know, when you create some kind of bizarre limitation for yourself, you come up with really interesting ideas. So I don't know. I don't want to speak for her. That's my impression. <laughs> That's my question too. The Momento Quartet will be performing all of these pieces on the interpretation series at Roulette on Thursday, October 17th at 8 p.m. We hope you can join us for, for a spontaneous evening of music inspired by improvisation by Gordon Beaverman, Arthur Campella, Adam Rudolph, and Yusef Latif. It's going to be exciting.